Buongiorno everyone and welcome back. My name is Aldo and I'm from Italy. My name is Vera and I'm from Moldova. We are overlanders, adventure travelers, nature and animal lovers. In 2016, we sold out everything we had and converted this Toyota Land Cruiser behind here into a tiny home on wheels. His name is Toto. Since then, we have been driving around the world, showing through our videos and photos how beautiful, but at the same time, how fragile our planet is. So far, we drove on five continents and visited 52 countries. Next destination, Africa. Today, we're going to talk about our previous lifestyle and how things changed since we started to travel. Some people may think how we can talk about environmental concerns or sustainability while driving around the world and burning diesel or shipping our car across the oceans and the cargo ships. Well, here is the answer to that. We are a simple, ordinary couple that five years ago used to live in England. We had a good career renting a big house. We had a sports car, a second car and a motorbike. We used to go on holiday abroad one month a year, expensive hotels, restaurants, and if we had the chance, we would also take a plane for a long weekend getaway. We were buying branded shoes, new clothes, electronic devices, and changing them every time a new model was coming out. We were eating all the food we liked, regardless of which part of the world was coming from. We were producing so much rubbish and waste so much water and electricity, we had no idea, because we were living according to the modern European standards. We were doing our recycling. We thought as long as we are doing that, we are doing our duty as a good citizen. All of that until we started to travel. At the beginning was difficult. Water was not enough. Without the comfort of a house, for a few years we didn't even have a fridge. But it was not long until we got used to this particular lifestyle, as we had so many advantages and beautiful experiences in return. We started to like this minimalistic lifestyle. The road has everything you need. The less we had meant less worries, and consequently, less worries meant more free time. Free time to live and enjoy our life. Our bed is the most comfortable bed in the world, and the views from our windows change every single day. Can you imagine that? No bills, no rent, no stress, no routine. Our worries are limited to get some food, some water, a place to sleep. If we like it, fine. If we don't, we move further. Traveling this way, also meant for us to become more environmentally conscious. With more time on hands, we could finally open our eyes and see what was really going on around. The first big reality check, the world is much more polluted and contaminated than we thought it was, or social media and TV led us to believe. We started to appreciate so many things that before we took for granted. Just a simple fact to be born in Europe, without even thinking that this was a mere luck or a simple coincidence. What if we were born in Africa, India, Asia? How our life it would be then? After understanding all of this, it was inevitable not to change our mindset. Like Gandhi once said, be the change you want to see in the world. And this is how we changed. Before we used to live in UK, the average CO2 emissions per capita per year stands at about 5.6 ton of CO2. But those are the carbon emissions of England, of UK, divided by the population, not the actual carbon footprint of the Britons. That must include the lifestyle. So the flights for holiday you take going abroad, or the bananas you get from Ecuador, or the avocado from Mexico. So we did a proper calculation online using our previous lifestyle standards and bills and consumption, and we came out with the figure of 13.6 tons of CO2 per person. But I want to be fair for the purpose of this video, and I'm going to use the average, as a recent study shows, of 12.7 tons of CO2 footprint per person in UK. And I'm going to further round up that figure to 25 tons of CO2 per year for the both of us. Now, our main consumption, our main carbon footprint, is the actual diesel that we burn with our car. Also, I'd like to take the opportunity to mention that when we don't drive on sealed road, we only go on off-road paths that are meant uh, for off-road driving. And we never crossed any trail or path to go and damaging any terrain we went to visit, despite you seeing us in very remote places. We drove to date about 200,000 kilometers. To be more precise, 194,976 kilometers right down to this very same spot you see us today. We've been on the road 1,755 days. 
that gives us an average of 111 kilometers or 68 miles per day. We have been using about 4,000 liters of fuel per year. One liter of diesel emits 2.64 kilograms of CO2. So we calculated that the total of our CO2 emissions for the year coming from the car are 10.6 tons of CO2. We calculated, but before in England, between our commute to work, some grocery shopping and a little driving on weekend, we did around 67 kilometers or 41 miles per day. So we are actually driving right now 65% more than before, but this represents at least 90% of all our CO2 emissions. What about planes and containers? Well, to date, we only took two major transoceanic shipments. All of the others were much shorter, or maybe on a ferry. We are traveling by land, not by sea or air. Consider that from December 2017 until June 2020, we took one way, one hour flight from Colombia to Panama, while our total was in five days Aurora shipping. So in two years and a half, we only took one hour flight and five days water crossing for Toto. In addition, when we book a container, we pay the so-called marine fuel recovery. That is to offset the CO2 emissions of a cargo ship. We only use carriers that have modern vessels that run ultra low sulfur oil. We are calculated because of this an additional two tons of CO2 per year, bringing the total for the both of us per year to 12.6 tons of CO2. By looking at these figures, we can safely say that we have lowered our carbon footprint by 50% comparing to our life in UK. Furthermore, we regularly plant trees. And by the end of this expedition, we will calculate how much CO2 emissions we created, and we will plant trees to offset this value. Now that's enough with figures and numbers. Let's talk about the facts. Before, we used to buy food coming from all over the world without paying attention what was in season, buying from supermarkets, and sometimes even throwing away the food because it was expiring. Now, we only buy the food that we need. There is not enough space in the car. And we go to local market and producers and look which fruits and vegetables are in season. This also saves us money. Also, we compost our waste. We don't just throw it away in a bin. Before, we didn't know that plastic can only be recycled up to five times. We were not paying attention to single-use plastic. For us, it was something disposable. Wrappings, balloons, straws, an incredible amount of plastic bags. We were drinking from plastic bottles and so on. Now, we limit to the bare minimum our consumption of single-use plastic, just when it's unavoidable because of food packaging. We don't drink anymore from plastic bottles, but we have our stainless steel bottles and containers that we refill at public fountains. And for Africa, we also got some gravity filters that we will use every time we find the source of water. Also, we don't use plastic bags anymore, but we have reusable bags for our shopping and compostable bags. And despite traveling in a car, we do separate our waste. So we have the glass, the paper, the plastic, and we repurpose uh, something like the paper bag of the bread to use it as a bin liner. We carry all these things with us until we don't find the recycling bins or proper facilities. Before we were using all sorts of chemical products, from the washing up liquid to shampoo and other body care products, all in plastic tubes and containers, plastic cotton buds, plastic toothbrushes, and so on. Now, we use eco, bio, natural products that are good for us and for the environment, also plastic free. From the soap for our body and face, to solid shampoo, to the detergent for washing the dishes or our clothes, bamboo toothbrushes, wooden cotton buds, a reusable metal razor. We got that in pink actually, because as you can see, I don't really use that much. I'm also using a menstrual cup. Once you get used to it, it's very easy and comfortable. You will save money and it's environmental friendly. I'm also making my own DIY natural beauty products for the face, body and hair. Before, we used to throw away things. Every time they broke, just buy a new one. Now, we don't buy what we don't need. We reuse, repurpose, repair whenever we can. And only when we have no choice, then we recycle. 
before we used to eat everything we wanted and every day there was meat, fish or other animal products. We had no idea about overfishing or intensive livestock industry. It's about one year that we have drastically reduced the amount of meat that we eat and have recently adopted a plant-based diet which consists in eating 90% of the time something like cereals, grains, legumes, fruits, vegetables, natural oils and only occasionally, like once a month or such, eating some free-range eggs, cheese, organic meat or fish. I'm actually very happy about that because I need to lose some weight and certainly a plant-based diet can help me to achieve in doing that. Before water was not an issue. We could easily use 10 cubic meters of water per month, that's 10,000 liters. Now, we don't waste water. Water is precious. Excluding the one that we drink, our freshwater tanks have a capacity of 50 liters. And we use about 10 liters per day, so it lasts us for five days. That's over 95% less water than we used before. We take quick showers, we clean our dishes, and we brush our teeth twice a day. And each time, we use this cup full of water. For shampoo, all that we need is 2 to 3 liters of water. Before, we used to go shopping once or twice a month for clothes. Buying new shoes, clothes for holidays, useless presents. Now we don't buy new clothes, except for underwear, socks or shoes when we break. We are well aware about fast fashion industry and its impact on the environment. Also in children's labor and the conditions those kids are working. We buy second-hand or local handmade clothes. For example, in the USA, we bought a bunch of brand new clothes still with tags in charity shops. And this beautiful dress that I'm wearing, I bought in charity shop for a few dollars and nothing wrong with it. Instead of buying some useless material gift, we ask the person what really needs. Or we try to recreate moments and share experiences to remember together. For example, last Christmas, we bought each other 150 trees in Malawi. Before in our house, the lights were always on, TV on, appliances running all the time. Yes, we had our energy-saving light bulbs, but we had no idea about the ecological cost of all of that. Now, we don't waste any electricity because we are living completely off the grid and we rely on our 12-volt batteries. That recently, we have integrated that with the solar panel to be even more self-sufficient. Also, since we start traveling, we only have had one telephone number because there is no need to have two mobile phones. We are always together. And sometimes people ask us, what's the best number? What's your number? Said, no, sorry, we only have one SIM card. It's just one telephone number. We have recently opened our very own charity organization that mainly focuses on conservation of the environment and sustainability. And we are doing the best we can to preserve nature. The name of the charity is Try to Give Back and we are using all the revenue generated through our YouTube channel to fund our charitable actions. So please, if you haven't done it yet, give us a like, subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends. It doesn't cost you a thing and it's a simple way to support us and the right cause. Thank you for that. If you would like to find more about our charity, there is a short video up here. In conclusion, is van life really sustainable? Well, we can't speak for others, but the way we do it, it certainly is much more sustainable than our previous lifestyle in UK. And we hope that by sharing our story showing you how we changed, we could inspire and motivate many others to lead towards a more sustainable lifestyle, whether or not you are a full-timer with the van or camper. And please, when you are traveling or visiting a beautiful wild place, don't litter. Leave only your footprints behind and take everything away with you. We need to preserve what's left of nature and make it enjoyable for somebody else as well. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Arrivederci.